Hi, in this tutorial we're going to have a look at the development of T cells. So I'll begin by drawing up all the stages of T cell development. Like all cells, the T cell initially arises from a stem cell. The stem cell then differentiates into the lymphoid progenitor cell. This is opposed to the myeloid progenitor cell. If you want to know more about which cells give rise to which, have a look at the Cells of the Immune System handwritten tutorial. The cell then progresses through a series of stages. This begins with double negative 1, also abbreviated DN1. But then it progresses onto DN2, DN3, DN4, and finally onto DP, which stands for double positive. We'll talk more about what double negative and double positive means in just a moment. The double positive cell then goes on to become either a helper T cell, denoted T with the small h, or a cytotoxic T cell, denoted T with the small c. These two cell types can be considered as single positive cells, so let's talk about what that means now. So there are two glycoproteins, that is, a protein with a sugar attached to it which are classically used to determine if a T cell is a helper or a cytotoxic T cell. These two glycoproteins are called CD4 and CD8. The CD stands for cluster of differentiation. These are basically a bunch of markers that help immunologists differentiate one cell type from another. We often use the terms CD4 positive or CD8 positive when talking about a cell that expresses one of these markers. And this is where the nomenclature of the developmental cells comes from. Stages DN1 to 4 are called double negative because they express neither the CD4 glycoprotein nor the CD8 glycoprotein. That is to say, they are CD4 negative and CD8 negative. As you have probably figured, the double positive cell expresses both the CD4 and CD8 glycoproteins. Or we could say it is CD4 positive and CD8 positive. Now the double positive cell interacts with thymic epithelial cells, and this helps it decide whether to become a helper T cell or a cytotoxic T cell. There are actually some cells which become neither, and thus perish, but that's a whole other story. So the cells that become helper T cells stop expressing CD8, but they continue to express CD4. So they are CD4 positive, and CD8 negative. Conversely, the cells which become cytotoxic T cells stop expressing CD4 and continue expressing CD8. So they become CD8 positive and CD4 negative. Because these cells only express either the CD4 or the CD8, they are called single positive cells. Okay. So CD4 and CD8 are the most important markers that we talk about when discussing T cells. But there are plenty of more, and often they are expressed at various stages throughout the T cell development. So the first marker we are going to look at is C-kit, and it is expressed from the stem cell stage until its maximal expression at the double negative 2 stage. Now a characteristic of the double negative 1 stage and the double negative 2 stage is a marker called CD44. And it is only expressed in these two stages. CD25 is then expressed at the double negative 2 stage 
and the double negative 3 stage. And neither the CD44 nor CD25 are expressed at the double negative 4 stage. This means that by knowing if the cell expresses any of the CD44, CD25, CD4 and or CD8, you can tell which stage it is in. I know this can be really confusing, so I'll give an example. Imagine in a laboratory you conducted a bunch of tests on a cell and you found out that it was CD44 negative, CD25 positive, CD4 negative, and CD8 negative. The only cell that this could be would be the DN3. This is because it is the only cell that fits all these criteria. Now I just want to clarify one point. All these markers actually have useful functions to the cell, but in this situation we are just using them to classify which type of cell they are. Now two other markers which are very important in T-cell development are the pre-T-cell receptor, abbreviated pre-TCR, which is expressed at the double negative 3 stage and the double negative 4 stage, after which it becomes the T-cell receptor, abbreviated TCR. The T-cell receptor is the receptor which allows the T-cells to identify which other cells have been infected, or more accurately, are expressing pathogen epitopes within their MHC molecules. We'll speak more about this in a later video. Now both the pre-TCR and the TCR receptors are accompanied by the CD3 marker, also known as the CD3 T-cell co-receptor. The T-cell receptor is not unlike the B-cell receptor and forms in a similar way. However, instead of a heavy chain and a light chain, we have a beta chain and an alpha chain. The TCR beta chain is analogous to the BCR heavy chain, and it rearranges first. This happens somewhere between the double negative 2 cell and the double negative 3 cell. Once the beta chain is rearranged, it can be expressed by the double negative 3 cell. It is this chain which makes up the major component of the pre T cell receptor. The other, less important component is called the pre TCR alpha chain. This shouldn't be confused with the actual TCR alpha chain which is recombined and then expressed between the double negative 4 cell and the double positive cell. Once the TCR alpha chain is expressed, it can combine with the TCR beta chain to form the T cell receptor. That's all the cell markers that I'm going to discuss in this tutorial, but be aware that there are many more which we haven't covered, and they can all be used to further differentiate these cell types. Finally, let's have a look at where this all happens. The very first phases of this process occur within the bone marrow, at which point the cells then migrate to the thymus, which is an organ located in the very upper part of the thorax and can extend into the lower neck. This shouldn't be confused with the thyroid, which is an unrelated organ located a little higher in the neck. In fact, T cells are named after the thymus. That is where the T comes from. The rest of their development occurs in the thymus, at which point the helper T cells and the cytotoxic T cells then migrate into the circulation and onto secondary lymphoid tissues. These include lymph nodes, the spleen, and mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, also known as MALT. And that's an overview of T-cell development. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please help us produce more by making a donation at www.handwrittentutorials.com.